All right, so this is the first video um, in my little tutorial series where I'll help you um, make your very own fluid simulators. In this video, I'll just be giving a short overview over each of the different fluid simulation methods. So basically, the ones that I have implemented are the uh, grid-based fluid simulators, um, smooth particle hydrodynamics, and uh, the material point method is the new one, which I'm showing a lot of videos of. So grid-based methods, the most common paper uh, for game programmers is uh, Yoss Stam's uh, Real-Time Fluid Dynamics for Games. It also, there's a paper on NVIDIA, which, on the NVIDIA website, which shows you how to implement it on a graphics card. This uh, grid-based method is actually really good for uh, GPUs, and because it's very, the data structure is very regular, it's on a grid, and so it's very friendly for parallel computing. And yeah, it's actually, I implemented it in the pixel shader, in a pixel shader, and it's actually, very straightforward to do, even extend it to things like multi-grid because like with uh, with the GPU you get like things like MIP mapping and stuff and you can use that to like implement a multi-grid uh, pressure software and it's very friendly for the GPU. Um, it does have a few drawbacks and one is, is it's, it, it has like this tendency of diffusing and like your smoke will get like really blurry and stuff so if you really want to have like a clear interface like with um like with liquids and stuff uh grid based simulators well i guess you could use a level set and stuff like that anyway all of the different uh fluid simulators they're like really odd they are really just basically tied in together they all use the same equations basically and it's just like it's just they all do the same thing just in a different way and like the formulas are slightly different but it's basically the same and you'll really see a very like close relationship between the material point method and uh, smooth particle hydrodynamics I'll be going through that in like a later video but Basically, smooth particle hydrodynamics is it has like particles, so it's like it's very similar to the way that you learn about materials in uh, your uh, high school classes or whatever. Basically, like molecules and everything. And in smooth particle hydrodynamics, your fluid is represented by a bunch of particles, and they interact with their neighbors. There's like a bit of interpolation going on, like uh, a particle will sum up its density. It will like get, a, get its density by uh, summing up like weighted like contributions from its neighbors and then it will... So basically like smooth particle hydrodynamics, the particle finds its density, from the density it finds its pressure and then it, um, it pushes the other particles around it or pulls them towards it depending on whether its density is more than or less than its rest density. And that's like the basics of the smooth particle hydrodynamics method. You can actually, it, people also do incompressible simulations with smooth particle hydrodynamics and it's basically the same as grid-based methods in, where like in Yostam's paper he does that like projection method the iterative software for the uh, incompressible simulation and yeah so like smooth particle hydrodynamics like you can also have like grid based methods that are compressible and and also uh, smooth particle hydrodynamics uh, things that are either compressible or un incompressible and yeah, so it's all like, all the parts of it are 
interchangeable. You can, you can with SPH, you can also have another way of summing up the density where uh, you like look at the um, velocity field around the particle and then uh, like you integrate the density like through time. Like you see whether like most of the particles around it are moving towards it or moving away from it. And yeah, and then like you add to its density value. That usually is a bit unstable because like errors they accumulate and then uh, like your simulations start blowing up so most people use like a density summation thing where they uh, weight the contributions of the neighbors and they sum it up using like these uh, kernels which are basically like you can think of it as like kind of additively blending blurry blurry like sprites you know like You've probably seen those somewhere on, like, in some videos where you additively blend something and it's like all glowy and stuff. And yeah, blurry circles that are additively. That's kind of what SPH is. And then it, and then that helps it interpolate, like, the uh, information and stuff. And then material point method, it's basically just that. Like, um, material point method your um, particles, they, um, it's kind of like drawing those blurry circles onto a, uh, onto the image and then that's how you do it. Like basically in the material point method, your particles will, um, they will uh, interpolate their values to a grid. That's called like a scatter operation where it goes to the grid and then it'll, um, all the particles will gather that information back to calculate like things like its density or the like velocity around it like the deformation gradient and stuff for like for when you have like stress and stuff so yeah material point method is basically it's kind of like an approximation of SPH that's kind of how I feel about it because like SPH, you're interpolate, interpolating directly with um, the uh, neighborhood around it. And then with NPM, it's kind of a little indirect thing. It's kind of like when they have like, when they film a movie, and, like they have like several generations of things where like, first you have like, I actually don't really know how it works, but I know that like something about the Star Wars thing and like the original like thing being lost and we don't have like the high, highest quality of it anymore because like they kept on it. so yeah that's basically what npm is like it does that indirect step that really actually speeds it up the uh, thing about npm is um it's actually not exactly as high quality as the uh, sph NPM is actually, in my experience, is actually very stable, but like there, and there aren't like it doesn't explode as much as um, as pH. Like you can have really high stiffness constant and pretty high gravity, and like it'll fall and like it'll remain like pretty incompressible, and it won't explode. But like there are gonna be grid artif artifacts with. Uh, the material point method and that's basically the thing I'm trying to work around in my uh, implementation of the material point method. Um, I'll probably talk more about like the stuff like in more in detail this is just a little overview so uh, yeah